I'm Cece Summers. Welcome back to My Dear Hatchet Man. The prologue in day one have been recently rewritten, so there's a whole bunch of new dialogue, a whole bunch of new options to go through, and I'm really excited to see what kinds of shenanigans we're able to get into now. <laughs> I tend to run away from my problems. It's how I ended up here in the first place. Doomsbury. Located somewhere in Massachusetts with a small population of 30,000 people or so, it's known for being a college town where most young adults have taken over the streets and businesses. It's got a rich history, from cryptids to devil-worshipping cults. If you were a gang of crime-solving teens, you'd have your work cut out for you. <laughs> but the townspeople revel in the mystery, urban legends, and strange folklore. Considering how quiet the town was usually, anything that was a break from a monotony gained notoriety. Many people, especially families, would come and dump their kids for spring or summer break. You know, a boomer's worst nightmare. I dug my claws into this sleepy town, attending Doomsbury University. For the past few months of my fall semester, to settle, I fell into a routine. Eat, sleep, study, repeat. At first, I was excited to come from the next town over. Receiving that acceptance letter was the best thing to happen to me. I was handed a new life, one way more different than who I was. I wanted it more than anything. So once the chance was given to me, I took it. Hook, line, and sinker. I was doing fine for a while, but it was hard to make friends. I was isolated. The only times I left my house was to grab a slice of pizza or some coffee from the cafe. I sort of trapped myself in this cycle. Sometimes I wouldn't bother to eat and slug down sleeping pills. To say this move wasn't going smoothly would be the understatement of the century. It's not like I hate it here. Maybe I was just doomed to be miserable no matter where I went. I mean, I'm much happier here than where I used to be. That's not saying much though. I wandered into the woods thinking that maybe a walk could wear me out and I could catch up on some sleep. There was nothing fun about laying on my bed dissociating until I passed out. So I decided to leave my cave for some late night snacks from the local convenience store. Another staple of Doomsbury is the mystical and expansive forest that surrounds it. Wood trails that could take you to the many businesses and homes. All the natives knew the trails like the back of their hand, and I was so sure I did too. I was pretty familiar with my usual path on my walks, staring at the same fucked up sidewalks or kicking the occasional pebble down the dirt paths. Walking didn't take up much of my time, though I wished it did. I wouldn't say I'm much of a nature lover, but the woods do look nice, especially during golden hour. Tonight, I decided to take a different path. I wanted to see what the woods could bring me. A shortcut, or maybe an epiphany, you could say. Again, I say, if you're going to explore a new trail in the forest, please don't do so at night by yourself. Still not a good idea. <laughs> Maybe I could find a cool looking stick from the ground and pretend it's a sword. I'll admit it doesn't sound like much, but given the circumstances, I have to work with what I got. It was starting to get colder. I could tell by the numbness nipping at my fingertips. I jammed my hands into the pockets of my pants, trying to get some feeling in them. Wait a minute. Where exactly am I? God damn it. Well, this was just perfect. I'm all alone in the woods, with no service, no sense of direction, and it's dark out. That's what I get for being adventurous. I'm an idiot. My eyes scanned around through the thick foliage of the trees. How long was I walking for? I couldn't have walked that far out, but it was too little too late for that now. The soles of my feet were aching. Begrudgingly, I sat on a large rock as a sort of makeshift seat to relax and collect my thoughts before I had a mental breakdown. I sigh, slightly grimacing from the cold, hard surface of the rock. I dropped my plastic bag of goodies onto the grass, my warm face crinkling from the frigid breeze. I don't know what to do. I can't believe I'm lost out here. That if I died, it would be weeks before my body was found. Daytime. Provisions. Friends. 
I sniffle, wiping away the small tears forming at the corners of my eyes. At least I have my snacks. Provisions. Check. <laughs> my hand reaches down to rummage the bottom of the bag, feeling around for what I could get my hands on. I feel something wrapped in plastic and pull it out. I grabbed an off-brand, healthy granola bar that was coated in chocolate and some caramel drizzle. Not exactly the most exciting choice, but fuck it. I needed something to chew on. I struggled with the wrapping. It was getting in between me and my pseudo-healthy crunchy bar. The deafening silence was disturbed by what seemed like the sound of a twig snapping. We're gonna go into fight mode. Fucking, I'm ready. I'm ready. Come at me, bro. <laughs> my legs lock me in place as I shoot upwards in fear. What the hell made that noise? I was starting to get the sense I wasn't the only one here and that I was being watched. Calm down, Cece. Maybe it was just an animal. Or maybe not. Of course, I would be murdered in the most cliche way ever. I gawk at a pair of glowing, predatorial eyes emerging from the flora of the forest. My heart was racing, and I could feel my blood running cold. I think he was getting closer to me. Scratch his fucking eyes out. Stay the hell away from me! I look around for anything to use as a weapon. Now I regret tossing that cool stick aside while on my way back. Wait, my snacks! I grab my plastic bag while not weighted in the slightest. I could throw a snack or two to make them at least mildly annoyed. <laughs> I also pointed my granola bar at him like some kind of sword. Not exactly the most threatening sight. If you're gonna try to kill me, you're gonna work for it. And you better hope I don't turn the tables. <laughs> <laughs> How cute. I couldn't make out his features well, but his hair stuck every which way out of his head. He appeared to be holding something. A hatchet. Something wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. Or just a random, strange man in the woods holding a hatchet. This guy seemed oblivious to the situation at play here. I was so stunned, I couldn't even speak. My eyes were too focused on the hatchet he had resting across his shoulder, just so casual-like. The guy tilts his head to the side, confused by my uneasiness. Oh, this. He held one of his hands up before letting the hatchet slip from his fingers onto the patch of grass beneath him, moving slowly to emphasize that he was harmless. He did all of this while putting up a friendly smile. Take it easy. I'm not gonna hurt you. Are you lost? Oh yeah? What makes you think I can trust some guy with an axe in the middle of the forest like it's nothing? The stranger only replied to my question with a smile. It was only making me more nervous. Well? Answer me. It's a hatchet. Huh? It's a hatchet, not an axe. <laughs> I blink at him. Was he mocking me? Is this all just one big joke at me for him to laugh at? He was acting way too casual and didn't try to pull anything once. Was I overreacting? I didn't put down any of my defenses though, as I continued to eye him suspiciously. Are you gonna answer my question now? He continued to have that small, almost innocent smile plastered on his face. It's annoying. I let out a huff, rolling my eyes. Answer mine first. He let out a chuckle at my response. I noticed his movements weren't threatening and seemed to be casual. All right, all right, I'll comply. He put his arms up, almost like he was trying to surrender and play off my interrogation. Would you rather be stuck in the woods then? No. Then you should trust me. Super compelling argument. Trust. Gained. <laughs> Easier said than done. He placed a hand over his mouth, trying to hold back a chuckle at my snarky remark. Uh, well... You got me there. But do you know how to navigate your way back? Do you? 
There was a small beat of silence before he raised his hand. He was wearing brown, fingerless gloves. I know these woods like the back of my hand. You learn a thing or two when you live out here. I'll even walk in front of you so you don't feel all antsy. I took a few seconds to think over his offer. I didn't exactly want to be stuck here forever until my body got discovered by a search party or eaten by vultures. Whoever this guy was, he was the best choice I had for now. Fine, lead the way. He smiled at me, reaching down to the ground and picking up his sturdy hatchet, perfectly sticking out from the soft tufts of grass. He swung the tool back on his shoulder. If I catch you doing anything remotely suspicious, I'll start swinging. I hear you loud and clear. He offered me his hand. I could barely make out the calluses and a few scratches from his hand. I was still a bit hesitant, but I took it anyway. Let's go. Let's get going and get you somewhere safe. His grip was surprisingly strong, but he wasn't squeezing my hand or anything. The trees were becoming less dense the more we walked together, with the light of the moon guiding us through the foliage. Now and again, he would give me small glances, and in return, I got a better glimpse of his features. Particularly, his eyes were the most noticeable. Both of them are a different color. I couldn't help but stare at them like I had spotted a rare creature in the wild. I don't think I've seen you before. Are you new around by any chance? I was a bit caught off by surprise, not expecting him to bring up a conversation. I just realized that I had been looking up at him without saying a word. Well, I moved from the next town over not too long ago. He perked up with interest. What made you decide to stay in good old Doomsbury? I merely shrugged at him. I had lots of reasons for staying here. I doubt this guy wants to hear about my problems, and to be frank, he was a near-perfect stranger. I won't spill my guts, but I'll tell him something. Wanted to get out of my bubble, to put it simply. Doomsbury University seemed like the best school for me. How is that going for you? Oh, you know. Perfect. Fine. Super. Uh... That bad, huh? I cringed. So much for being vague and mysterious. The guy chuckled more under his breath as he continued to guide me through the trees and bushes. We both stayed silent, occasionally shattering the silence with small talk. He could tell I was uneasy around him. He seemed a bit sullen, like he had been looking forward to talking with me. My short responses and constant fidgeting told him that I was still on my guard. Not that he blamed me. He was sure he'd be cautious of some dude with a hatchet, too. As we continued our trek, the tension we had before slowly dissipated, and I stopped being afraid of my own shadow. With time, the unkept dirt path of the woods merges with the edge of the sidewalk, a sign of civilization. What a relief! I could practically kiss the ground right now. Looks like we finally made it. Oh my god, thank you. Jeez, I owe you one. I finally let go of his hand, stuffing mine into my pockets. Don't mention it. It wasn't an issue at all. I turned over to him, scratching the back of my neck and feeling the chills of the cold air tickling my skin. Listen, you didn't murder me, and that's all I could ask for. I should at least return the favor. <laughs> I'll return the favor by not murdering you now. You can go home. I'll allow it. <laughs> the guy didn't even give it a thought, as he grinned ear to ear. Tomorrow, maybe back in the woods, and we could get some more snacks from that place. He pointed to my plastic bag. Oh, sure thing. It wasn't until I looked down at it and saw that a decently sized hole had torn its way. Only a few of my snacks had survived. It must have ripped along the way. I groaned. Are you kidding me? That was my dinner. I'll get you some more stuff tomorrow. Deal? I looked at him with sad, tired eyes. He gave me a sympathetic smile. For some reason, I trusted him. I don't know how else I could explain it. Deal. And thanks again. I'll see you around then. He continued to stand in his place while I turned my back from the woods, walking into my neighborhood once again. Stopping at the front door, I gave him one last wave. I couldn't tell from the distance, but he seemed to wave back. I'm so tired. 
Exhausted, I immediately threw myself onto my bed, tossing the plastic bag on the floor. Finally, I can get some rest. God, my feet are already aching. How long did I walk? It seems incredibly late. My eyes, they feel heavy. Whoever that guy was... Wait, I didn't get his name. I'll ask him tomorrow. I feel heavy, like I can't get up. Something is on top of me. Oh God, how long did I sleep? I must have passed out and slept like a rock. Last night. Oh yeah, I got lost in the woods, met a strange dude after he scared the living daylights out of me, and he promised me some snacks for today. I feel some mix of comforting jitters sinking in. It hasn't been long since I've moved in and I wasn't exactly rubbing shoulders with my neighbors, but I still talk to them. I never heard them mention anything about a man living in the forest. If they knew, they would have given me a heads up and I probably would have reacted differently by hopefully bringing mace or a baseball bat, <laughs> right? Was I overthinking this? Probably. I should probably check my phone. I held the button on the side, tapping my foot as I waited for it to light up. My home screen brightens as the notifications trickle into it. An unknown number. Hey. Sorry to bother you. What chapter are we studying for Professor... Why? I'm addressing visual novel authors right now. Why do you keep putting in names that I don't know how to pronounce? You're making me look stupid. Er. It's spelled like LaCroix, so I'm gonna go with Mocroy. <laughs> this is Erica, by the way. Oh, Erica. Uh, yeah, she's a part of my English class. I think we exchanged phone numbers because our professor recommended it. Initially, I didn't plan to ask for anyone's number, especially since I didn't know anyone in that class. I barely even talked to them other than occasionally asking someone for a pencil. Erica was the one to approach me first. She wasn't talkative either, only answered questions sometimes and gave snarky remarks on a whim. I didn't know much about her other than she'd be a constant center of attention with her outfits. She had a keen eye for fashion, and she would constantly amaze me with how she would walk into class. She'd breeze in effortlessly like a runway model. Some outfits were her projects for her fashion design class. Others were simply her wanting to look good that day. It was pretty surprising to find out that she was majoring in interior design. She'd be the chicest interior designer, that's for sure. Erica seemed like she had her shit together from what I could glean from the few times I spoke to her. Chapter four. I send the text and proceed to let out a groan while dragging myself up from my bed. I would much rather sleep the day away, but I was promised snacks. It's been the first time in a while that I've been motivated to do something other than rot in my room. Damn. That's kind of sad. Yeah. Thanks. I chuckled at her response. That was kind of cute. To-do list. Sleep. Cry. Same. <laughs> Before I go out, I need to refuel for the day. I reached out to the fridge, pulling with a bit of force thanks to how janky the handle had become over time. I should get that looked at. Everything around this house needed some touch-ups, though. Maybe I shouldn't have turned down the idea of having a roommate. But I do enjoy my privacy a lot, and I wasn't keen on losing that anytime soon. The cool air of the fridge nicked the tip of my nose as my eyes searched for food. It was practically empty. Definitely some waffles. Quick and easy. I'm craving something sweet too. Now, where did I leave that bottle of syrup? Okay, let's start day one. I squeeze my eyes shut, feeling attacked by the blinding glow of the sun. I don't like that. <laughs> it's too bright today. I walk to the other side of the road, 
frisking to the overgrown forest again. I stuffed my phone in my pocket. It wouldn't be of any use since my service couldn't reach in the middle of the woods. I walked through my familiar path, trying to remember where exactly the guy wanted to meet. He was pretty vague on the details, telling me to simply meet him in the woods. Not gonna lie, it just hit me how sketchy that sounded. I fell into a daze walking until everything around me looked strange. Well, that didn't take long. I guess I have to sit back and wait for him to find me. Uh -huh. You actually came. I heard his voice again. It sounded almost in disbelief. I turn around to face him. His eyes are wide, but a smile slowly forms. He seemed happy to see me. Happy to hatchet murder me. You thought I was gonna ditch you or something? Well, maybe? He laughs nervously under his breath, scratching the back of his neck. Like I said, I owe you one. And I want my snacks. I can't turn down an offer like that. I got a chuckle out of him, easing him more and more into a conversation. It soon subsides again into an awkward silence. I shifted my eyes around, trying to think of what to say next. Oh! Um, I didn't catch your name, stranger. I didn't throw it. Ugh. Oh my god. I can't believe you just said that. You're way too young to be making uncle jokes. I couldn't resist. He flashes a smile at me, one that was way too proud of himself for that line. Alan. Alan? Yup. Alan Orion Constance Oti Vimont the Third. Is that really your full name? I squint my eyes at him. <laughs> nope. It's just Alan Orion. Wow, you're already lying to me. I can't believe you, Alan. I shot back at him in a snarky tone. Alan proceeds to place his arms behind his back, flashing his rather sharp teeth. Are you going to tell me your name, Doe Eyes? Oh, I forgot that he called us that. <sighs> he leans in, not too close for comfort, but enough that I could take a good look at his features. He had scars on both sides of his cheeks. They were small, and one looked like a marked X on his face. His shaggy hair had bleached tips on some ends. Then my eyes fall onto his staring directly at me like some new creature he discovered. Both of them are different in color. I couldn't help but feel a chill run down my spine. It seemed creepy, but also familiar. I was staring at him again. Uh, oh, Cece. Pleasure to meet you, Cece. What was that? You see that? Like, I don't know if that's intentional or not. It doesn't seem like it, because flashing through like that, he doesn't have that face, but... When you hit enter... Ah! <laughs> intentional or not, it's very creepy that he does that after you tell him your name. Pleasure to meet you, Cece. Obviously. <laughs> Alan's hand reaches out to shake mine, and I gladly take it. So... About those snacks. I grinned mischievously as soon as he brought up the topic of snacks. That's exactly what I was here for. Oh, right. We should get some. There's this convenience store around... The food box, right? I go there from time to time. And I would assume you know your way out of the woods, right? Hopefully. Alan chuckles, sensing my anxiety about being able to get out of the forest. You seem to get lost easily, huh? What would you do without me, Doe Eyes? I told you my name. We don't... We don't need to do all that. <laughs> he keeps calling me that, even after I told him my name. That's what I just said. <laughs> it's weirding me out, man. I don't like it. <laughs> that kind of attention made me feel uncomfortable. I scratch the back of my neck and shift around awkwardly. I'm not sure how I feel about him or that nickname. There was a beat of silence. All right. I'll lead the way. Cool. We both walked together, or more like I followed wherever Alan walked. On the occasion, he would stop and mutter to himself under his breath. 
I could have sworn I heard him counting the trees, pointing at them before smiling at me and beginning to walk again. It made me curious about just how he seemed to know where we were. Despite how far we walked, it all looked the same to me. It was starting to scramble my brain. So what's your whole thing here? Huh? I mean, I'm assuming you live on your own out here, not anywhere in town. It's none of my business, but how come no one has ever told me about you? Alan looks up to the sky, giving some thought to my question, as his arms droop side to side as he walks. He didn't appear to be slowing down. Hmm. I guess no one really acknowledges me or knows that I live here. Everyone here kind of keeps to themselves, which I appreciate. Wait, do you not have any friends? Alan shook his head. Nope. The most faces I've seen are when I visit the store to restock on food. Family? There was a small pause, but Alan didn't stop walking. Left them a long time ago. Oh. Dunno. I figured that I live better by myself. Nobody bothers me. I don't bother them. So you're a hermit? Alan chuckled, scratching his cheek. You could say that. I nodded, understanding Alan in a way. Not wanting to interact with others, living peacefully out in the woods. And then a funny thought came to my mind. But you do realize that you are talking to me and joining in on a snack quest, right? Not very hermit-like. Did I break your zero human interaction record? Alan's eyes latched onto me, his lips tugging a smile. I guess you did. I don't mind you being my first. Your first what, though? It didn't take us long to get to the convenience store. I didn't think I minded the distance. Didn't know a conversation with someone I knew for less than 24 hours could be so distracting. The obnoxiously bright lights of the store pulls me out of the trance. There were a couple of people in the store, mostly older men getting cases of beer or students getting a quick lunch. A worker mutters, welcome, as we step in, not bothering to look up from their phone. Well, pick anything you want. It's on me. I perked up as soon as he said that. My eyes scan around every corner of the store, wondering what I could get. I think last time we got ice cream, and then he took a bite of it, if I remember. And it's my fucking ice cream, <laughs> so let's not. I'll get a slushy this time. I quickly ran to the back of the store, grabbing myself a huge cup of frozen syrupy goodness. They were fairly cheap. I looked back and saw that Alan was also scavenging around for snacks. Both of us were smiling brightly like children running amok the aisles, not even bothering to get a basket for our collection. Alan instantly flashes a proud smile at me, holding his snacks securely. Got everything you need? Yeah, let's go. Alan dropped everything to the counter to pay, only to receive an eye roll from the cashier. They seemed like they just wanted to be done with their shift, to clock out and go home. We quickly leave the store after paying, bags filled with a bunch of goodies. I'm already getting hungry, he mumbles out loud as I enjoy my slushy. I expected him to reach for the bags and start rummaging through our snacks, but instead he unzips his jacket. He exposes a horde of chocolate bars. I blink, confused. When did you get those? When they weren't looking. Alan pulled a chocolate bar out of his coat, his fingers fidget with the plastic wrapper as he tears it open. You stole it? He then takes a bite, smiling proudly to himself. Yes. I said it was on me. Just remember, kids, don't steal from small businesses. If it is a small business, leave it alone. If it is a large business, a corporate business, a chain, steal whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> Alan continues to munch on his chocolate, proceeding wordlessly to fish another one out. Boop. He playfully nudges it on the tip of my nose, tantalizing me to partake in his stolen loot. I promise it'll taste better. I was a bit hesitant, but I did end up taking the chocolate and unwrapping it. It was just candy. What's going to be so special about it? That's what I thought until I ate it. And he was right. It does taste better. I laughed in disbelief. Wow, you are actually right. 
Holy shit. You see? I still couldn't believe that he had stolen candy. While it was kind of impressive that he did it so nonchalantly and with ease, I still couldn't help but feel bad that he went out of his way to grab enough to share. Mm, no, it's mine. That's mine. Don't, don't touch my shit. I will bite you. <laughs> Maybe that wasn't a good idea. Why? Why? That was ominous. <laughs> We kept walking for a few minutes, our bag of snacks almost empty. The only thing left was wrappers and packaging. We seemed to have lost track of the time. I finally began to notice the sun was about to set. It was really quiet, with only the occasional rustling of the leaves from the trees and the rush of the water growing louder. Martian Lake? I note, seeing a rather silly looking sign of an alien. During my short time here, I had never visited the lake, but it was the first thing you would see when driving here. The crystal blue water and soft sand that almost looked pink thanks to the sunset caught my eye. Why did they name it that? There was a beat of silence, and I looked over to Alan, who seemed distracted. He was hunched over the sand. He seemed to be looking for something. Oh, um, from what I've heard, back in the 60s, people allegedly saw an alien walking around here. In a blink of an eye, the alien ran into the woods and was never seen since. Sounds like a typical Doomsbury legend. Do you believe the story? Alan stood up straight again, picking up a rock and observing it. He simply shrugged at my question. After living here, I would believe almost anything. So you've seen some things? Gosh, you could say that. Alan tosses the stone up a couple of times in the air before flinging it across the lake. My eyes follow it, and to my astonishment, the stone skips across the water with accelerating speed, never stopping. I squinted my eyes the further and further it got until it was nothing more than a speck. That doesn't sound natural. Then it was gone. Alan let out a satisfied hum and my mouth hung open in astonishment. I wanna throw a rock. It's not gonna bounce, but I'll, I'll throw it. In a hurry, I began to look around for a decently sized stone. I pulled back my arm, rock in hand, as far as I could. With all my might, I threw it in the water. I eagerly looked towards the water, only for the rock to disappear in the shallow waters. I pout. Oh. Aw, don't bum yourself out. I'll teach you, doe eyes. Here. Alan approaches me, picking up a random stone as he did. He examined it, turning it over in his hand. You can't just use any rock. It has to be very flat. And then there's gotta be a little nudge for you to place your fingers and grab onto. Then he grabs my wrist gently, handing me the rock and places it in the palm of my hand for me to hold. Now, before you do anything, people tend to throw it like a frisbee. Don't throw it with your wrist. Sling your whole arm. I focus. Taking into consideration what Alan told me, I felt a lot more confident in this throw. I take a deep breath and toss it again. I did it! It was a lot slower and didn't go as far as Alan, but still. I cheer and Alan gives me a thumbs up. We walk back to my place. The sun had already set with the moon and the stars taking its place. I stretch, bending and stretching my legs after all that walking. I had fun today. Did you know? I nodded to him, approaching my doorstep and leaving Alan behind. We should do something like that again. Alan's eyes widen. He appears to be quiet for a moment. We should. This is about when the trouble starts, usually. I turn my door handle, opening it slightly. See you around, Alan. Much like yesterday, as soon as I entered the house, it was as if all my energy drained out of me. I didn't even bother to go upstairs to my bedroom. I fall onto my sofa, face first. I'm just gonna sleep here. The sound of the TV slowly drowns out the sound of my breathing. Soon, every single worry I had faded away. Is that it? Okay, let's go back and do the nice 
choices and see if we get any new dialogue. I guess we'll scream instead of brandishing our granola bar like a sword. <laughs> I didn't have anything else I could do. I huddled myself, trying to desperately appear small like some kind of scared animal, not putting up a fight. I let out more of a yelp than a scream. Out of sheer desperation, I threw a random snack from my bag at them. Is that all I could really muster? Nothing but a pathetic call for help? I shut my eyes, waiting for some sort of shock or a hit on the head, but... Um, are you lost? I hear a concerned voice. Cautiously, I lowered my guard, taking a peek at who exactly was in front of me. Oh, hello, Alan. <laughs> it's so charming how you snuck out in the middle of the woods at night with the hatchet and snuck up on me. It was so, so cute. Slowly, but still cautiously, I lowered my guard. However, my eyes stayed glued to him, waiting for the moment he may do something unexpected. Okay, I'll laugh at his stupid dad joke. I couldn't help but laugh, trying my best to stifle it. Are you serious? Jesus, dude, just tell me your name. I struggled to finish my sentence. Every vowel would be interrupted by my laughing fit. It wasn't even that clever or funny. Oh, I love that you call me Doe Eyes. It's so great and cute and wonderful for me. <laughs> my face turns red. My eyes shifted around and I began to laugh. I was merely trying to brush off his comment. Come to think of it, I did find him to be cute. All right, let's get the damn ice cream because he's all weird about the fucking ice cream. <laughs> I reach into the cold freezer, grabbing myself whatever seemed most appealing. Alan flashes me a cheeky smile. He seemed giddy that we got the same thing. I looked back and saw that Alan was also scavenging around for snacks. Yeah. Alright, fine. Have some of my ice cream, you little shit. <laughs> it only seems fair, right? I motioned my ice cream towards him. I was shaking it to signal Alan to indulge a bit. He tilts his head like a confused dog before getting the hint. Oh. He leans forward. I felt his hand graze against mine, pulling me a little bit closer to take a bite. His lips smacked. He takes a moment to savor the taste. Then his eyes gaze up at me, staring with a smirk spread on his face. One, I couldn't exactly pinpoint what he was trying to say, but my heart felt like it was pounding. You have good taste, doe eyes. I mean... Oh my god. <laughs> Alan then steps away, continuing to eat his forbidden chocolate. Hey! I call out before following him right on his tail. To the lake! Teach me how to throw the rock, sir. I look up at Alan with hopeful eyes. Sure. Okay. And then throw a rock. And change nothing. <laughs> okay, well that was Hatchet Man. Day one, rewritten. I'm really excited to see day two and day three. I think they're already in the works of being rewritten because I know that the initial demo, you got farther than just day one. So I'm excited to see what new changes there are. It's cool that there's um, little sound bites now for him with like a voice actor. He's not any less creepy, but I guess that was to be expected. <laughs> Please consider the life of a hermit, considering that when you're a hermit, nobody knows you. So the chances of you getting hatchet murdered like plummets <laughs> and i will see you later